In the last couple vids, I've been talking to you about cross-country ski winter travel. And cross-country skis are a lot like sports cars. You know, they're fast and smooth, it's a lot of fun. But like sports cars, cross-country skis need somewhat of a nice road to really enjoy the qualities of them. Now in the case of backcountry cross-country skis, which is my favorite way to cross-country ski, think of that as the SUV of biped winter travel. It can go off-road a little bit. It can handle a little rougher environment than cross-country skis. And so looking from that perspective, that brings us up to snowshoes. Snowshoes are the 4x4 of biped winter travel. Snowshoes can really bring you into the heart and soul of what winter is all about because you can go places that even ATVs and snowmobiles will not bring you. You can go deep into the woods on snowshoes. You know on the right day, maybe one like this where snow is coming down gently and it's quiet, snowshoes can almost be a magical experience. I'm not trying to bring any drama into this. It's just a great way to really soak up nature. Now snowshoes are not a complicated business, but some of these are uh, mission specific and some of them are meant for different types of environments. And I want to go over some of those differences. In this vid, I'm only hoping to inspire uh, somebody to give this a try and also to help them pick out the right kind of snowshoe for uh, you know, where, they're, where they are or what environment they're planning on going into. Now one of the best buys that I've got displayed here is probably these military surplus uh, snowshoes. I buy these for the kids and me. They're pretty cheap. I mean, I think I got these for around 25, 30 bucks. And overall, you know, like the military is famous for, they really aren't good at any one specific thing. But they're best for probably the widest range of activities during the winter. These are not going to hold you up well in deep powdery snow, but for snow that's been there a while, snow that's packed down naturally or packed down on a trail, let's say, these are great snowshoes. They really work well for the kids. They're a couple pounds a piece. Uh, for walking around camp, they're great. For walking on ice, they're great. They have huge crampons on the back. Uh, they actually work well in, uh, let's say you've got a, a, a shallow layer of snow and you're into loose gravel. Uh, these are just great all-around shoes for most duties, especially working around camp. If the snow is not too deep and too powdery, they're actually very good for uh, hunting as well. If you're going uh, through the woods, these are easy to navigate, obviously. They're smaller, uh, easy to wear. They're just, uh, you know, if, if you're not going to get into serious snowshoeing or you just want to hit the trails once in a while, I would really recommend these snowshoes. Cheap, light, uh, extremely durable you'll never have to buy another pair. These are the newest style uh, snowshoe that they got out there and you'll see a lot of reviews on these and people making a big deal about them. My review is not very favorable and the number one reason why is because they are way too expensive. I mean they're you know you can pay a hundred to two hundred dollars for a pair of these and God help you if REI or somebody puts their uh, <laughs> puts their name on it because then you're probably gonna pay at least another fifty or seventy five dollars more and it's just not worth it. They're not that good. In fact, these are rated for a couple hundred pounds. I bought these for me. They're, uh, you know, supposedly supposed to hold me up, but they, you know, if I'm in deep powdery snow, forget it. I would say that these are the equivalent of these. Uh, you know, they're not very good for deep snow. They're good for tramping around already made pack trails or snow that's been sitting for a while, but don't expect to go into uh, really deep snow with these. All right, if you're just doing this as a hobby and you want a decent pair of snowshoes, they'll work for you, but you're gonna pay top dollar. I would really recommend just looking for a surplus uh, set like this. In fact, I think these are a little better than these. And this is just a fraction of the cost of these new ones. Um, and to be honest with you, some of them are built better than others, but the bindings on these things are not gonna last forever. These are gonna last forever these are not so it's really where you want to spend your money or how cool you want to look i'm not totally trashing them i do use them but uh if i have my pick i'd rather have these and i usually let the kids have these even though these are meant for 200 pounds they just don't hold me up and they're not that good next up is another uh surplus snowshoe a little little older version uh, than these over here and these are really made for uh, deep powdery snow uh, pretty easy to navigate as well through uh, the woods, um, but they'll hold you up in a lot deeper snow. These will hold me up, and I'm 210 pounds. 
They're about three and a half pounds, so they're a little heavier. They're definitely an, an adult uh, snowshoe. They don't have any crampons. But when you're in deep snow or, or trying to travel long distances, uh, you don't want the crampons on there. See, these two, I would say, are much shorter distances. You're not going to be snowshoeing all day in these to go from, you know, one campsite to your, you know, further into the bush. These are meant for, uh, you know, long travel all day. And again, if you're looking for something that absolutely is going to last the rest of your life, this is it. Pretty cheap. I think I picked these up for maybe $40 uh, surplus on Sportsman's Guide as well. And uh, they'll last the rest of my life. I'll always have them. Just hang them up in the garage and they'll be there when you need them. And lastly, that brings up the traditional snowshoe. These are by far my favorite. They are the heaviest snowshoe I have at 3.5 pounds, but I seem to never get tired in them. Uh, if these are the 4x4 of snowshoes, these are the monster truck. These really keep a guy my size with a pack, maybe even pulling a, a, a polk sled up on top of the snow. It's, it makes it very easy to travel long distances in. Uh, great for puffy, powdery, deep snow. Uh, I can still, because they're so narrow, um, I can travel fairly well through the woods as well. Uh, you'll notice there's a real nice bend on them. In fact, all of my snowshoes have a bend on them. That's important when you're uh, going to look at snowshoes as well. That bend does help you from uh, tripping up. They are expensive. A traditional set of snowshoes will probably set you back a couple hundred bucks, if not three hundred dollars. I bought these used, but I feel like I'm buying a piece of artwork with these. I mean, they truly are something you can display in your house and uh, they really catch the eye. They're just beautiful. There's no machine that can weave these things. You know, these are all done by hand. Unlike these, there is a little bit of maintenance to traditional snowshoes, but if you maintain them well, they will last you an entire lifetime, and your children will inherit them, and if they take care of them, they'll last into but their But once every well. other year, I'll apply spar urethane or marine varnish using a very cheap, stiff bristle brush. I'll just work it in to the tines. And once every other year is plenty. I guess that depends on use, but for me, anyway, once every other year works good. Now there are lots of options for bindings, but for my traditional snowshoes, I prefer leather bindings. It just looks right. Every few years, I will uh, put about a quarter cup of Neat's Foot Oil into a Ziploc bag and soak the bindings down thoroughly. And then as I need it, I'll put mink oil on them for the rest of the seasons. So that wraps up my little uh, tutorial and tips on picking out snowshoes. This is a great activity. Uh, it just takes you to places where other people aren't. And that's where I like to be, I guess. Um, there's a tremendous satisfaction in going on a long hike or on a winter camping trip in snowshoes. Now inevitably, I know this because I've been on YouTube long enough, somebody's going to say because they've seen it on TV or Survivor Man that it's easy to make a pair of snowshoes. And it's really not. You can make a pair of snowshoes to get you through an emergency situation, but you're not going to make a pair of snowshoes uh, that's going to last any length of time or be, be comfortable on a long distance hike. Uh, not without a lot of time put into them. So don't fool yourself, please, with what you see on TV. It takes a lot of skill to make a set of snowshoes like this. But you don't have to spend a lot of money to get yourself a decent pair of snowshoes. That will last you a long time and you can put a lot of miles on them. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with some uh, video footage that I shot with my daughter. We went out the other day for uh, a beautiful hike and snowshoes. Enjoy guys.
Make the day.